welcome to the Lighthouse Church here in Fisher's Gate. Whether here in church or watching online or watching a recording, I pray you'll be blessed by this morning service. Now, I don't know about you, but I love singing hymns. And I go to a care home every week. And one of their favorites is Amazing Grace. So I decided to look into the background and the meaning of it to share with you. Now, I have just a few trivia facts about this hymn that might surprise you. It has been recorded more than 7,000 times by various artists, such as Judy Collins, Susan Boyle, Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, Andrea Bocelli, and also Elvis Presley. And I'm positive if I carried on looking even, even more, I'd find many more as well. But it was played by the Royal Scots Goon Guards and was at number one in the hit parade, for those of who, who can remember that in 1972, and that was there for five weeks. One other fact that surprised me, I never sang this in church until in my 30s. The hymn books we used in church when I was little, hymns, ancient and modern, and golden bells, didn't have it in. Well, that's of the trivia. Let us look at this hymn that we know and love. It was written by John Newton, who really knew the grace of God. John Newton was a servant of slaves in Africa. And although his mother was a godly woman, John rebelled against all she taught him and became known as the blasphemer. Well, the Holy Spirit started sowing seeds in John, especially during a very stormy voyage. He read a book called Imitation of Christ. After that, he tried to live a better life. He was still training his slaves, but tried to make life better for them. He carried on like this for some years even holding worship services for them. But he was convicted of the inhuman aspects of his work and even became a strong and effective crusader against slavery later in his life. So, as John so clearly puts it in the hymn, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. What is this grace that John is writing about? We see clearly in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works that no one can boast. This grace we receive from God is because of his great love for us. That love sent Je that sent Jesus into this world to live that sinless life and took our sins upon himself so we can come to God the Father. As we go through the hymns, it says, "'T was grace that taught my heart to fear, "'and grace my fears relieved. "'How precious did that grace appear, "'the hour I first believed. "'That fear is being in awe of God, "'giving him his rightful place in our lives. "'And that last line, "'How precious did that grace appear, "'the hour I first believed. "'And it goes on to tell us through all the dangers, "'it is God's grace that sees us through it all, "'and grace will lead us home. Last verse, when we be there, the books in the home say a thousand years, but we are going to be with the Lord forever, bright shining as the sun. We'll be singing praises to God forever. What a beautiful picture of our future, of our future with the Lord. Now, John Newton was an ordained minister, but also preached wherever, wherever there was a large building. He also wrote many other hymns, one that was a favorite of mine, Glorious things of thee are spoken. And one line in that hymn really struck me was, he whose word cannot be broken. Do you know, people have tried all different ways of getting rid of God's word, but it will, be always, it will always be with us, even in heaven. We'll be learning from it throughout eternity. I could go on, but let us remember, it is God that works in us when we are open to his leading and guiding. It took quite a few years before John Newton truly trusted how God has used him, his preaching, his testimony. He was not ashamed to tell people he had made a mess of his life and how God's grace saved him. And of course, the hymns he wrote, still with us today, nearly 300 years later. All those people that have sung and listened to those words of that beautiful hymn, we don't know how God would have used it, but we can only pray that more people will be saved by God's amazing grace. So let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you for that, that hymn and the many other hymns that he sang, that, that he wrote. 
that have encouraged people throughout the years. We do just pray for this service this morning. Pray, Lord, you'll lead and guide us. Pray especially for Paul as he brings your word. And we do just commit this service to you. Give us ears to hear and hearts that are open. And help us, Lord, to truly worship you in spirit and in truth as you're worthy of. In Jesus' name, amen.